shock treatment, but she's already a lost cause. Don't call her that to touch you. All right, fine. You go see what our comatose witness has to offer. After all, what the hell? She booted me out somehow. All right, let's see if anything here can tell me what the hell is going on with this girl.
saved Iris's life, but paid with her own. Bell killers going after young girls. But what was it? What, what'd you see? That poor kid. Her sister freed her when they were about to be scorched, but she couldn't return the favor. Leave us alone! Are you okay? It's Rose. She has flames. She was possessed. I told you to stay back! Who are you? I'm Joy. You don't belong in this place. Orderlies. Crap, I'm so dead! All right, Iris could be the answer to everything. Help her, help her! Come on, she's coming with us. No! You're not taking her! Look, you want the orderlies to shock her? She stays here. You want her to be safe outside? She comes with us. It's up to you. I've, uh, I've had a long career working as a state inspector for the Department of Mental Health. During that time, I've been to a lot of institutions, and I have seen a lot of horrible things. But um, nothing even comes close to the evil events that I witnessed at Fairhaven Sanitarium, the place they now call Lux Eterna. I first arrived in um, 1926 to investigate claims of overcrowding and neglect. However, Fairhaven's reputation was tainted long before that. In 1911, Fairhaven opened its doors for the first time. A notoriously violent criminal by the name of Jack Yates was the hospital's first patient. He was to be the, uh, the, the shining example of the hospital's ability to cure the mentally deranged. However, when the superintendent's family was visiting one day, Yates broke free from his restraints and he, uh, he killed the man's wife. Since then, no one knows what happened to Yates or the superintendent. Well, that is, until now. Superintendent Wallace Halstead greeted me at the door. He seemed as empty and unkempt as the patients he lorded over. And uh, as I conducted my evaluation, I couldn't help but notice how nervous he got when I passed by a small broom closet. And naturally, I felt it necessary to find out why. When I opened the door, I was hit by the overpowering smell of human excrement. As the light flickered on overhead, uh, I was horrified at what I saw. A withering man lay shackled to the floor in a pile of his own filth. 
Years of sunless existence had turned his skin, hair, and eyes milky white. He'd been chained there for so long that his, his skin had grown over the shackles. Um, it took me a moment to realize that the husk of a man was Jack Yates. The police arrived and Dr. Halstead was carted off. Doctors moved Yates from the small room for the first time in 15 years. The floor beneath him was permanently stained with the shape of his silhouette. They, they tried to remove the shackles from under his skin, but the shock of it all was too much for him. He, uh, he died the next day. I watched as they walled up his tiny prison, trying to pretend that it never happened. I honestly hope he's in a better place. Although the staff still claims to hear his agonizing wails coming from inside the walls. Over here, in those shadows there, coast is clear. Why do my worst nightmares keep getting way worse? Okay, let's figure this out. I thought I would never see this again. All right, so what do you know about this contract? Nothing, I... Oh, come on. It doesn't make sense. So he just asked you if you knew about a contract? He didn't ask. He wanted us to admit to it. Admit to having a contract with... Demons. Demon? We did nothing to him. He had no reason to go after us the way he did. The way he did? He drowns one girl and burns another? And where have I seen that stake before? That's it. All right, look, look. Get Iris to the church. Make sure that she's safe. I'll catch up with you later. Go. Okay. Come on, Iris. All right. Now, what the hell does a museum gala have to do with Rose's murder? <laughs> <laughs> 